Only a few people ever get to walk out the tunnel onto an NFL football field. My presentation will bring you right out there, right into the huddle, right into how we're thinking, right into the motivation, right into the success of being an NFL player. The Broncos make the playoffs and people go nuts. I mean, they're painting their horse houses orange. And there's a whole generation of children named John Elway Wilson or John Elway Smith. Or... So the Museum of Natural History decided to take advantage of this uh, insanity about the Broncos and hold a pep rally. The museum called the Broncos, and the Broncos assigned myself and our old running back, a guy named Sammy Winder, to appear at this pep rally. And as I walked in, Sammy and the lady in charge of this thing were heading down to where the pep rally was to be held, and I fell in line with Sammy and, and asked him what was going to happen. And Sammy told me, Carl, here's the deal. First, I'll get up, I'll talk about the offense, then you get up, you talk about the defense, and then this lady here is going to hand us a Seahawk, and we're supposed to tear it up. Well, I figured I could do that. So I got this bird by his legs, and I hold it up to the crowd on this side and say, this is what we're going to do to the Seahawks. And then I, then I run over here and I hold it up to the crowd and I say, this is what we're going to do to the Seahawks. And then I tear the thing in half. And feathers are flying everywhere and stuffing's going to the ground. And I, and I throw the half with no head attached to the ground. And I tear the head off the other half. And I throw it out in the crowd. The crowd's going crazy. And I'm thinking, I love public speaking. This is for me. And then I turned around and saw the lady in charge of the thing. <laughs> she had her head in her hands. She couldn't believe what I'd just done. You see, that the Seahawk was actually an osprey. And it was part of an ongoing study of the osprey species. And this particular osprey had been collected in 1910. <laughs> I got hate mail from the Audubon Society. <laughs> My parents read about it in Washington, D.C. in the USA Today. As, as I'm leaving the museum, they're announcing, whoever caught the head of the Seahawk, please bring it back. You'll get free passes to the IMAX theater. <laughs> so, so that's the courage to try new things, even though they might go terribly wrong. Motivation is a tricky thing. I played 12 years in the NFL, and to be successful out here, you have to be motivated. They don't put your name up in the stadium for no reason. In my programs, we focus on key strategies that help me be successful here in the NFL and in my life. Those same strategies will work in your life too, whether you're talking about business, family, relationships. Keys like teamwork, courage, dedication, Desire, honesty and forgiveness, goal setting. Things that might seem obvious, but I'll explain them to you and give you ways that they help me right here in the NFL. So Bubba comes up to me right before this game and says, Carl, slow down. This is just for fun. Slow down. <laughs> See, to me, dedication is hard work, constant learning and refusing to quit. If I was on the football field, I was going full speed. No, it didn't matter if it was preseason, regular season, postseason, Super Bowl. There's only one speed. And why not? How am I going to find out what I'm capable of if I'm not going full speed? Now, I know a lot of people think if you just work hard, you're going to be successful. That's not true. I know a lot of people who work hard and who aren't successful. But I don't know anyone who is successful who doesn't work hard. I had the opportunity to speak to, uh, to corporate leaders all the time and, and discuss success principles and it's amazing to me how many times someone who owns a really large business and is doing great has come up to me and said, you know what, Carl, this wasn't the plan. I was going in a different direction and I saw a problem as an opportunity and I reacted before anyone else did and now I've got this big company built around that one thing that I saw as an opportunity and everyone else saw as a problem. So how do you be decisive? How do you prepare yourself to be decisive? First, you have to be able to anticipate the problems that are coming. And to do that, in football, we practiced. 
And we practiced hard, and we watched film, and we were ready, and we, we studied our opponents. Well, you can anticipate things that are coming in your life, too. I believe in six keys to success. You know what? Talent isn't one of them. I believe that God has given each of us more talent than we can possibly use. But along with that, He's given us free will. And what that means is it's up to us to go out, to try new things, to have the courage to do that, even though we might fail, and then work on those skills, work on those talents, and develop them. Carl Mecklenburg speaks to corporations, associations, and leadership groups across the country. He presents inspiring lessons. Life in the NFL taught him about teamwork, courage, dedication, desire, goal setting, honesty, and forgiveness. Lessons that can be applied anywhere. Carl was very gracious. He came out to our community to learn more about our organization, and then he tailored his um, comments tonight to our organization, really embraced our mission, and that really meant a lot to us. But you can't test for Alzheimer's now. You can't give somebody a pill or give them a DNA test yet. But it's there. It's out there somewhere. And if we continue to work and we continue to team up and we continue to donate and do the things we have to do as members of the team, we're going to solve this thing. Teamwork is an obvious thing in sports. I mean, you can look at, at the Broncos. I played on some great Bronco teams through the years. I got my, my Super Bowl rings and stuff. It's great. But man, those were good years. Three Super Bowls, three A AFC championships I played in. Uh, and I loved going to work. Those, were pe those days were wonderful. I mean, we got along. The, the old guys got along with the young guys. The black guys got along with the white guys. The, the coaches got along with the players. I mean, it was fun to go to work. I also played on some bad Bronco teams. My last year there, 1994, I think we were seven and nine. It was Wade Phillips last year. We had a, uh, a group of people standing by, behind our bench at every home game chanting, Wade must go, Wade must go. I mean, it was hard to go to work, too. The linemen didn't get along with the, with the backs. The front office didn't get along with anybody. The rich guys didn't get along with the richer guys. <laughs> I like that one, too. <laughs> but it was hard to go to work. And the funny thing was there wasn't that big of a difference between one team and the other. I mean, a, a team is like a teeter-totter, a seesaw. On one side, you have a small group of people that are the leaders. They think long term. They think we instead of me. And they put that team mission, that team passion first. On the other side, you've got the egos. The egos are thinking short term, it's all about me, where's my money? And then in the middle, you've got the rest of the team, and that's usually the largest group. And by adding or subtracting a leader or an ego, you can tip that teeter totter one way or the other. You've got momentum towards success, or you've got momentum towards failure. That's how one person, one individual, can make a huge difference in a, in a large team concept. Your donation today and your continued support down the line here with AWARE is going to make a huge difference. You're going to tip that thing towards success. They're going to fund the right research, and this thing's going to get solved. Carl Mecklenburg's personal life complements his professional success. He is a devoted husband and father. He has a strong commitment to many Colorado charities. These at-risk kids learn not only how to set goals, but more importantly, how to challenge themselves to reach their goals. I talk about goals as the small steps you take to reach your dream. If you want to get to the Super Bowl in life, you have to set goals that point you in that direction. So I, uh, went to Augustana College in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Any Vikings in the house? Is there really? Wow. <laughs> a couple of you. That's like the first time ever. <laughs> in my second year there, I led the team in sacks. I played every down on defense. I thought I was going to get the full scholarship at the end of the year. The coach sat me down in that debriefing session that every coach has at the end of the year and sat me down and said, Carl, we know your dad's a doctor and he can afford this school. We're going to take away that one-third scholarship and use it to bring someone else in. Now, I still love football. That was still a passion, a desire of mine to be the best player that ever played the game. But I wasn't going to play there anymore. So I left Augustana College and I walked on at the University of Minnesota. 
When you walk on, when you transfer between four-year schools, you have to sit out for a year. You're ineligible. You're ineligible to play in games, but you can sure practice. So I was a lot, and let's face it, I was a live blocking dummy for a year. That's what I did. <laughs> if I wanted to eat with the team, I had to sweep up the weight room or sweep up the training room. But that's all right. It was worth it to me. I love football. Like I said, to me, success is overcoming obstacles on the way to your dreams. And my dream was to be the best player that ever played the game. And then a week later, we played our spring game. The spring game is the inner squad scrimmage that every major college has. They do it down at the home stadium. They invite all the fans out. And I tore a ligament in my knee in that game. And as I lay in the hospital bed after surgery, the coach came to me and said, we want you to give the scholarship back, Carl. Have you ever been there? Where you work and you fought and you planned and you dreamed for something and somebody pulls a rug out from under you right when you get there? Don't give up. Don't quit. That's the difference between successful people and those that aren't. That's the difference between successful organizations and those that aren't. In addition to public speaking, Carl is a celebrated TV personality and master of ceremonies. He is a sought-after radio and TV host. His sideline reporting is humorous and educational, making him a top national on-camera personality. The Denver Post has published his perspective on sports and human potential. If I take the first step in the right direction before anybody else does, all the angles are in my favor. That's not true just in football, folks. That's true in business. That's true in life. That's true as a student. That's true as a family member. That's true in relationships. If you can do that, if you can be decisive and believe in yourself and step out when it's time to step out, you're going to accomplish great things. To book Carl Mecklenburg for your next event, please contact the person who provided this video.